Hello again. Uh, this is part two of our risk analysis on the uncertainty concerning terracing. And uh, as promised in this video, I'm just going to go quickly through the program and do whatever I, I said here uh, in the PowerPoint. So to do that, let's just go directly to the program. I start from parinf.txt. Here are our parameters, the flow parameters and the transport parameters. Now this could be either calibrated parameters or they could be uncalibrated parameters that you collected from the literature and previous work done in that watershed or similar watersheds. So I start from here and the next thing we want to do is to run a no observation uh, iteration. So to do that, I'm just going to go directly here to the no observation. By the way, I'm using Swatcop Premium here. Uh, there is really no difference in the procedure. As I said, just maybe the name of some folders are different, but everything else is exactly the same. So I will go directly to the no observation here. And the first thing you want to do is the definition file of what to extract. And as you've seen before, now I'm using SPE from this output file and the rest of the information is as we discussed before. And then the next thing you have to do is to go to the executables. In the executables, again, you go directly to the SPE no observation post processing here. And here we would like to only run for the reach. So that's the only one which should be checked. And then further down, you have um, about the extract, uh, this is the, the extract batch file, which tells you what you should extract. So here again, the only thing we want to check is to extract no observation from the reach file. That's really all these three of the, all you have to do to make a no observation run. And then you uh, save everything and you can close everything. And in this case, I'm going to invoke the parallel processing I have eight CPUs and I will run it here. Uh, let me go back to parinf here. I just mentioned that I'm only making 24 simulations, just that things go faster, but you should be making three, 400 simulations. So the next thing is to just run it, uh, pre-processing. And next is to run the program. Now, with parallel processing, as you may know, um, the program uses all the CPUs, and uh, we have eight CPUs here. I have eight CPUs, and I'm running 24 simulations, so that each CPU runs three program, uh, three execution simultaneously, and this makes the whole thing go, go much faster, especially if you have to make a larger number of uh, simulation, this makes the process go much faster. All right, so this is done. Okay. Uh, the next thing you have to do is to run the post processing for no observation down here. And okay, so it will ask us if we want to save this iteration and we want to save it under no terracing case. The name here is arbitrary, but you should use something that you can easily remember after. So this is iteration, no terracing. We save this. You can also view the, uh, the 95 PPU. If I close this and go to the output. And here is output, no observation. And here is no observation for the reach plot. So that is what my uh, soil loss or the sediment at the end of the watershed looks like for the no terracing case. So what I have to do now is to make a run for the terracing case and for that all I have to do is to change five parameters as we discussed before. Let me just go uh, to this here. So these are the five parameters that we need to change based on this formula and delta is this percent changes here. So to do that, I will go to the project, open the project here, and I go to uh, spe.in and to par value. 
Here I copy everything and open an Excel sheet. and paste it here and uh, to separate the columns go to data text to column delimited and space all right so i have more of my parameters here uh, let me open a space here uh, this file unfortunately does not bring the name of the parameters here. Perhaps in the next version I will do that. But to get the name of the parameters so you know where is which parameter is where, uh, you go back to the program. Here you copy all the parameters from here. Go back to Excel, make a new sheet, and paste the parameters here. So these are now my parameter names. I take the parameter names from here. Let's get rid of this space here that separates the parameters. I get the parameter names, copy, go back here and uh, paste special as a transpose. So these are my parameter names. So the columns that I want to change are the C and 2. Let me just... Uh, maybe color them and then there is soil the two soil parameters available water storage capacity and hydraulic conductivity and then the two usle parameters which are here right these are the parameters i want to change i don't want to change anything else just these parameters when you change it you're setting up your model for uh, uh, a terracing case and using that formula, this is equal to um, delta for C and 2 is minus 0.2 times 1 plus R, which is this number here, and plus R again, this number. Okay. And then the next is the two soil parameters and that's equal to and delta here is 0.5 times 1 plus r plus r again and the next column i can just copy and paste this here and then the two usle parameters this is equal to, it was minus 0.2 delta times 1 plus R plus R equals, and then copy this in the next column and just fill the hole on the rows. So these are the changes I should make in order to make my model to simulate terracing. So I copy this one and uh, paste special, sorry, did I copy here, copy, paste special as value, and then the next two rows, Copy, paste special as the values, and finally, copy, paste special values. Okay, so now I have a set of parameters that is. Uh, We'll simulate terracing. Copy everything here. Go back to my uh, value file. Delete everything here and paste everything, the new parameters here. So now my model will simulate uh, terracing. 
So now all I have to do is run the case for the non terracing for the for the terracing condition and for that I just do an iteration but you have to be careful not to run the pre-processing if you run pre-processing it will delete uh, it will replace all the parameters with new values and that's not what we want to do we just want to run the program now with the same with the parameters that we already have and, and, and fixed there uh, but there is one more thing you have to do here, and that is uh, you have to go and delete from the output the output of the program from the previous program, which are these. You have to delete this manually, and you shouldn't forget to do this because uh, when parallel processing runs and brings the the output here, it will append it. It will append it to what is there, and if you do that, then you won't see a difference because you will just be uh, doing post-processing on the same values as before. So what you have to do is manually delete the output from the from the SPE out. Once you deleted that, then you make a run. And here basically, again to recap everything, what we are doing is we are running two conditions, the terracing and the non-terracing case, and we are analyzing the output, the sediment in this case, which is the soil loss from the entire watershed, the soil loss, and we are putting some monitoring value on the uh, dollar per ton loss of soil. And this information you can get from the literature, there is actually a lot of information about this, that how much does it cost, uh, the soil loss, because it's not just the top soil, it's the fertilizer that goes with it, it's the organic matter that goes with it, and uh, there's many other things, advantages of terracing, which SWOT does not account, but uh, you can see it in previous works. At the end, I will show you a, a, a paragraph from a, a paper that talks about other advantages of terracing, which uh, SWOT does not account for. And then we would like to get the risk for every case. And then because we have uncertainty, so we have the risk. And once we compare the risks and get the difference between the terracing and non-terracing risk, then that would be your expected saving or your ex expected benefit from terracing. Mm -hmm. And then you compare that with uh, how much you have to spend to do the terracing. And if it is less than that, then you can uh, go ahead with terracing. So this is the type of analysis that uh, we hope to do. So this is finished. So let me uh, so let me do the uh, the post processing here, and let's save this iteration as iteration terracing. Simply T for terracing. And then you can also observe the 95% PPU of this case. You can compare it here even to the previous 95% PPU. And uh, uh, you can already see, you can already see the difference, right? You can already see the difference between the two. So the next step after this is uh, we go back to the project. And in this project, I have to go to uh, in uh, a no observation case here. And actually, no, let me go to the uh, iteration because we now have saved two iteration. This is the no terracing case. And if I go to SPE.out um, and to the no observation, you will see our two 95% uh, uh, files here. Uh, the G stands for graph, but this 95% PPU is, uh, gives you the, the lower, the, the upper and the middle bound of the, of our private, of our, uh, of output and of the 24 simulations that we made. And this is calculated at the 50% interval. And we are going to use this for our further calculation. So let me get, uh, let me get 
the other uh, iteration for terracing case. And so this would be the observation, that, that would be the 95 PPU for terracing case. And here you can already probably see that these values are smaller than these values. Okay, the next thing we have to do is to run our, our risk programs. So this, we need the risk definition and the risk executable. So I copy this, uh, uh, paste it here in the other iteration for terracing. Also paste it here. Now let's look at the definition, risk definition file. So here, that's just the name of the 95 PPU. We have one variable, so set this to one. And 408 and 10, that's correct. And definition here, also set this to one. Uh, save. And also save this one. You run this risk file here, and you get the risk out. And, uh, okay, that is embarrassing. That's not what we wanted. Let's go back to the definition file. Okay, in the definition file, uh, when I did the SWATCOP 2019, the name of the files are a bit different. In this case, we have a, a, a reach extent uh, here uh, in the name of the file. So I put the reach in here. So in case you're going from the two programs, 2019 to, uh, to the premium, you may want to notice that. And uh, so I have to put the name, we have to put the name of this 95 PPU no observe. In this case, it has a reach. So I put the reach here also and uh, save again and, uh, and run the program. So in this case, uh, yeah, I get uh, to run this one also. So in this case, what I'm getting is that my 10, I had 10 intervals to calculate the frequency distribution of 10 intervals. So it just means that this is my soil loss, that there is 26% of the soil losses fall into this category from zero to here. So that's, that's the frequency distribution. So what I have to do next is bring this into Excel and do the rest of my calculation in Excel. So I copy this one. This is no terrace in case. I open a new sheet here, be a new sheet, and copy it here. Sorry, uh, this Excel has this, that once you copy something, it uh, doesn't let go of that. So let me go back here and into this sheet. And you just have to press the escape once uh, before you can copy something new into Excel sheet. Don't know why that is. So let's copy this again and paste it here. And this would be a no terracing case, right? Um, so I like this. This is a no terracing case. And then uh, for the terracing case, same thing, copy this. Paste it here and it would, this would be terracing. So I like this also. Now let's assume, let's, uh, Assume that cost of soil loss is uh, is a hundred dollar per ton, right? So this variable, this is my soil loss, and this is uh, let me just say soil loss, and if the unit is ton. That's what SWAT gives. And uh, same thing here. And this is probability of that losing that much soil, right? So if it's $100 per ton, then to get the a cost of failure, assuming 
sediment loss is our failure. So this is equal to 100 times this, and that would be uh, the cost, right? So that would be cost of failure. And uh, of course, uh, this is probability of, of failure. All right, so the same thing here equals to 100 times the loss. And let me copy this here also. And then calculate the risk. The risk is equal to probability of failure times cost of failure. So that would be the risk at this probability level and so on. And the same thing here, uh, risk equal to probability of failure times cost of failure. Okay, now at the end, if I calculate the average, the average of this, over the entire probability and the average of this, this would be my expected, expected risk, right? This is my expected risk. Now, to get the expected Uh, benefit, benefit from terracing, what I have to do is uh, subtract this, this is equal to this minus this here. So this is our expected benefit from terracing. So if uh, my final conclusion is if cost of uh, terracing is is less than uh, this value all right if less than this then it is then then terracing is worth it terracing is worth it so that is our our, our final final analysis and, and the conclusion. So we have to see now how much terracing is worth. And of course, get the proper values. I've just used 100, which is uh, extremely low. So that is the, that is the process. It is really very easy, but it lets you to do risk analysis. I think if you can use such analysis for your business or you know at some <laughs> business or for your work, for your research in the papers, it would uh, increase the quality of your paper at the very minimum. Now, as I promised, I'm going to leave you a paragraph that I found uh, interesting from uh, Posthumus and the Graph <laughs> 2005 paper. This is the title of the paper. I'm just going to leave this here for you to read, just to see that there are other benefits. There are other benefits in terracing, which uh, a, a model alone cannot take into account all of these benefits. Thank you very much for listening. I hope uh, you can use this information and it is useful to you.